ಮಾರನೌ ಧ್ಯಾನೇ ಸತತ ಉಡಿತ್ಯಜ್ವಾಲ ಸರ್ವಾಂಧನ ದಹೇತ್ಸ ಆತ್ಮ ಅರನೌ ಕಾಂಟಂಪ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಟರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ರೌಂಡ್ ದ ಪೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವುಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕಿಂಡಲಿಂಗ್ ಫೈರ್ ಬೈ ಫ್ರಿಕ್ಷನ್ dhyana mathane by churning as a form of contemplation satatam constantly krute when done urita vagatihi knowledge that is born jwala the flame sarva agnana andhanam all the fuel of ignorance dahet shall burn When thus the lower and the higher aspects of the self are constantly churned together, the fire of knowledge is kindled, which in its mighty conflagration shall burn all the fuel of ignorance in us. Namaste. So when the lower and higher aspects of the self are churned, Uh, what is churning? Well, first, what are the lower and higher aspects? The Saguna Brahman, with qualities and action and form and everything. <laughs> and the Nirguna Brahman, the higher Brahman or principal Brahman, as it's called. Without qualities, without action, without name and form, or any of that. So, what's the difference between them? Well, the Nirguna Brahman is the absolute reality, the absolute truth. It is what is. Everything else is sort of derived from it. <laughs> I say sort of because in the process it has to go from nirguna to saguna just to be different from the nirguna right there is a guna a quality huh and so many more follow from that so in theology this is called the shiva and shakti or the ultimate moiety the original duality the source of all manifestation and change but nirguna brahman doesn't change it never changes it is only objectless awareness and it comes into consciousness turiya sushupti swapna and jagrat only in manifestation or in other words in the secondary brahman brahman with qualities so these two represent a stark contrast like alpha and omega like yin and yang like black and white you know the most contrast possible and yet they coexist in fact the existence of one requires the existence of the other without one you can't have either so the duality is there in the very nature of brahman and it manifests from time to time and currently we are in manifestation so we have to view our manifestation in the context of the nirguna brahman to understand it rightly to do this requires going back and forth between the two until we understand the transition the junction or sandhya between the two so this is the province of meditation one has to 
winnow out or weed out or neti neti <laughs> away all the qualities of duality to come to the original superior primary Brahma, the Nirguna Brahma. Once you've done that, see, that is Raja Yoga, and you have realized emptiness or nothingness, then Nirguna Brahman is realized automatically. You have to do the work to get there. But once you get there, it's like, oh, uh, of course, yeah. It's an experience. Can't be expressed in words. There's no way. But once you have clarified that point and made it the center, the measuring post from which everything is measured to which everything is compared, this fundamental change in viewpoint is the result of this churning process. Huh? Now, churning is interesting. And the reason I make this gesture is because churning has to do, uh, in my mind, my, my experience, more with milk than fire. Now, in the case of fire, churning is also applicable phrase because when you start a fire with a stick, you twirl the stick either with your hands or with a bow. And the friction creates the third missing cause of fire. Because you have fuel, you have air, all that's missing is heat. The twirling, the friction of the sticks creates the heat that allows the fire to come into existence. Similarly, in churning milk, there is a change of state because milk is a complex colloid in its structure. And so the bonds connecting the colloidal particles can be changed by means of adding heat through friction. And this is what churning is, as in churning butter. It's too bad, you know, most of you who don't live in India probably uh, have never seen or had contact with churning milk and making butter. Uh, which is too bad, because we are several generations removed from an agrarian culture in much of the world. We miss out on so much experience that reveals the ways of nature. But the nature is exactly what we have to realize in the secondary Brahman, the Brahman with qualities, Mother Nature, the original mother of all forms of all living entities. So she makes these complex living systems. Milk is an expression of one of them. And milk, I mean, if you ever have cooked milk, boiled milk on the stove, you know it goes through seven stages of boiling, all the way down to a solid, which is called koi. And it's it's delicious. <laughs> it's off my diet completely, but it, anyway, it's delicious. So this seven stages of colloidal suspension can also be invoked by friction. Instead of heat from a fire, heat from friction of a churning rod. And this is how butter is made. The analogy is that by churning these two forms of Brahman, the primary and secondary, without qualities and with qualities, the detached Shiva and the mother of all, the Shakti, by mixing them together and observing their interactions, one can grasp the principle of change of state. And change of state, of course, describes consciousness. So how do we get out of being trapped in the Saguna Brahman and realize the Nirguna Brahman? By churning. By churning until it becomes a solid. And then we can simply, instead of an ocean, we can simply cross a valley and reach the island 
of pure Brahman, Nirguna Brahman, primary Brahman, Shiva. So this is the path. This is the sadhana. This is the process of self-realization. It's a process of churning. And by this churning, the fire of knowledge is ignited. When knowledge reaches a certain temperature, it undergoes a state change. That is, we become more intelligent by a quantum leap. How? Through mastering the different states of consciousness and the changes, the junctions, the sandhyas between them. Every day we go through all these four states of consciousness, from Jagra to Svapna, from Swapna to Sushupti, from Sushupti back to Svapna, and then to Jagra again, and we're always in Turiya, because Turiya is the witness of them all. So once we know, once we recognize Turiya as the state of primary Brahman, which is the watcher, the observer, as compared with and contrasted with the secondary Brahman, Saguna Brahman, which is the doer, the field of action, the field of knowledge, and so on, then we get it. We cannot walk on one foot. Huh? Pogo sticks never caught on for good reason. <laughs> They're terribly unreliable. Whereas walking on two feet is much more practical. <laughs> so when we have mastered both feet, saguna and nirguna, with and without qualities, consciousness with an object and awareness without an object, except itself, of course, then we can grasp the whole spectrum, the complete creation, huh? the entire landscape from the top of the mountain. Right now we are limited because we are attached to the qualities of Saguna Brahman. Therefore, those qualities have to be nullified by meditation, and before that is possible, one has to have a stock of good karma from karma yoga and also develop devotion through bhakti yoga. Those prerequisites have to be the foundation of our meditation. Otherwise, meditation simply leads to fall down. It cannot reach its goal. So by taking care by following the instructions of the Vedas and performing the sadhana of karma yoga and bhakti yoga, then one's meditation can be successful. One can realize a nirguna brahman. And that, coupled with our already existing knowledge and experience of the saguna brahman, can lead us to complete self-realization. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.